Hey everybody, they're really here. Welcome back to another episode of Destiny's Princess. A war story, a love story. We are on chapter 6 with Hanbei, titled Crucify My Love. That does not sound promising. I guess we won't have a little romantic time like we did in the last episode. Had a little bit of racy stuff happen, but Hanbei is still being... Well, he's holding himself back somewhat, but... He's been somewhat ungentlemanly towards us a bit. <laughs> Not that I mind, but the character does. Well, let's see what this crucifixion is about. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. What a terrifying sight the demon creatures be. Six horns on their head. One, two, three, four, five, six. The lord of the castle lunges with his sword. Snicker snack strikes the horrid demons dead. Huh? I broke into a smile at the sound of the singing I heard from outside. Oh, that was supposed to be a song? Oops, sorry. It must be the refugee children from the village. What are they doing all the way in here? The handmaid frowned and started to stand, but I shook my head. It's okay, let them play. Are you sure? Yes, it's calming hearing children play. It felt like I'd returned to a more peaceful time when there were no demons. What a terrifying sight that- Okay, I can't sing. I'm not gonna sing this, and I, I don't feel like making up a tune. <laughs> what a terrifying sight the demon creatures be. Six horns on their head. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> that brings back memories. I used to sing that song and play ball too. Oh, you too? I played it often as well. I wonder who taught me. I've known that song as long as I can remember. As have all the children around here. The children's voices continued floating in from outside. He sits so still, eyes open wide, face frozen stiff, a terrifying sight. I suddenly felt a chill. I felt like the sun had hidden and the air became humid. Princess? The handmaid looked at me curiously as I all of a sudden hugged my arms around myself. It's nothing. I regained my composure and smiled. I'd suddenly got a very bad feeling. Just, what was that about? One, two, three, four. The children's thin singing voices continued to ring out, on and on. For a while, the demon attacks became infrequent. Though small numbers sometimes prowled around the castle, we easily drove them back. The vassals became familiar and adept at how to deal with the demons. Apparently, the fighting prowess of the heroes I'd summoned here had an influence on the others. I'd sought out things I could do to contribute and was now helping with the mending and laundry. You really don't need to do any of this, princess. Upon seeing the mountain of sewing I'd acquired, the handmaid sighed. But I can't think of anything else I could possibly do to help out. Although I'm not very good, so I might be more of a bother than a help. I'd always been better at tree climbing and archery than more womenly hobbies. Of course you're not a bother. We can use all the help we can get right now. Well, that doesn't make me feel much better. I guess I'm just a last resort then. Oh, forgive me. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> the handmaid and I exchanged a smile and a giggle, but her expression suddenly stiffened. What's the matter? Oh, was Hanbei behind me? No sooner had I asked than I found out the answer for myself. Princess. Hanbei. From down the hallway, Hanbei was walking over to us with his usual easy smile. Do you have any plans for the rest of the day? Well, I just have the sewing to do. There's no need for a princess to be doing chores like that. Let someone else deal with the sewing and come with me. His tone was polite enough, but it was clearly in order. Hanbei turned and spoke to the maid. This is no work for a princess. You're going to take care of the sewing and... Uh, no! I'm not going to stand for that. No! I cut Hanbei off before he could finish. No? No? I was the one who asked for work to do. It would set a bad example to abandon it now. Once I finish, I'll stop by your room. Fine. 
I'll be waiting for you. Do you see this pile of work I have here? You might want to go do something else for a while. Hanbei spoke with a smile, but I could see a cold-hearted gleam in his eyes. Why still cold? Haven't we melted his heart yet? Let's go. I prompted the maid to come with me and started to walk. E yes ma'am, but princess, are you sure about this? She stood to my back as we watched Hanbei go, apparently very concerned. It's fine. Lately, Hanbei had seemed completely unconcerned about any sense of propriety. Clearly. It was like he was intentionally trying to embarrass me, always coming to proposition me. It took all my effort to try and get my own way sometimes. Soon, it was evening. Inside Hanbei's room, I bit my lip. I don't get you sometimes. You know very well that resisting will hurt only you. Hanbei's low voice echoed not far from my ear. Oh, what is going on here? The light of the lamp created shadows that danced around the room. Even at times like these, Hanbei never even loosened his collar. Wait, is he making me get naked and he's not getting naked too? That's not fair. Turnabout is fair play. I was reminded again every time that I was no more than a temporary plaything to him. His eyes narrowed as he smiled. You should speak up instead of just trying to bear it. Yeah, why can't I be willful here? I couldn't. That was the one thing I couldn't do. There were other vassals' rooms nearby. Surely some of them would still be awake. I see. Hanbei's voice was amused. So stubborn. Fine, do as you like. But morning's a long way away. You're going to keep me up all night? Look, you have work to do too. I listened to that voice with a hopeless feeling in my heart. I'm not enjoying this at all? As usual, Hanbei didn't attempt to cross that very last line. He probably just loathed the idea of fathering a child and having someone find out. Although I couldn't understand why he was then so open about asking for me in front of others. I didn't want to ask the reason, I figured it was better to leave well enough alone. When I was finally released, I fell into a short sleep. As I dozed off half asleep, I heard someone's painful coughing. Who is that? I had a memory of once listening to someone cough like that and feeling my heart break. Please don't leave me, my fiancé. Don't leave me here alone. <coughs> the heaving breaths, the lonesome turned back, trying to bear the pain alone. The beloved body, growing weaker by the day. It's... It hit me. Hanbei? My consciousness rapidly became clearer. Hanbei was crouched over in the corner of the room, coughing. Still slipping my gown on, I hurried over to his side. When I rubbed his back, he roughly swatted away my hand. I don't need your help. I just hurt my throat a little. Just stay over there and be quiet like a good little trophy. Don't talk to me like that. I squeezed my rejected hand. You don't have to remind me what I am to you. I was merely a toy to him. Once he tired of me, I'd be soon thrown out. I just don't like watching anyone suffer. I reached my hand out again. This time, Hanbei didn't try to push me away when I rubbed his back. I'll bring you some medical infusion later. Oh, that's the first time we've seen our own face in this. So that's what I look like. It will weaken your body if you keep coughing. You'd better take care of it as soon as possible. What did the doctor say? We'd better have him come back and take another look at you. You're used to this, aren't you? Hanbei interrupted me curtly. It sounds like you've taken care of someone else with a bad cough before. I have, once. The dream I'd had just before waking must have been about the eve of my fiancé's death. Even in dreams, I couldn't remember his name or face, but I knew in my heart that it had happened. And what happened to him? He passed away. When? You know, I don't remember anymore. It was a long time ago. Liar, why am I lying? Hanbei gave a quiet cough and then again fell silent. 
From through the door, I could see the sky slowly but surely becoming light. From somewhere came the song of a bird, announcing the coming of morning. How strange. Why did I feel so at peace, even after all the horrible ways this man has treated me? Princess. On top of my hand, wrapped around my shoulders, Hanbei's hand came to rest. My heart pounded loudly. His touch was different from the way he touched me before. He started to speak, uncharacteristically hesitant. His face looked somehow young. He was obviously struggling to decide whether to talk. You. Hanbei ended his sentence with that one word. Yes? His hand left mine. Never mind. Go back to your room. But weren't you just about to say... It wasn't important. Hanbei looked up at me with his usual cool smirk. That's no smirk, that's a frown. There we go. There's the smirk. There's no reason for a plaything to stay here any longer. This man wanted to hurt me. He wanted to look down on me to make me feel despair. And in reality, that was a very easy thing to accomplish. It's hard to believe in the middle of such troubled times. I mean, they were engaged, but still, they're not married. And there is such a thing as restraint. I thought it was nice of them to put off the wedding for a more appropriate time, but no. <gasps> they're gossiping about me! Now they know we're doing inappropriate things. Now we're just living in sin, as far as the servants know. No kidding. They're at it every single night. Ah, they know! Why did I bother being quiet? Apparently, the princess was seen leaving Hanbei's room again at dawn today. From sunset until dawn? Ho oh, ho, that's certainly something. For such a thin guy, he's got some stamina. <laughs> I'd like... <laughs> I'd sure like to hear his secret. Well, I just hope this doesn't affect his ability to perform when we really need it. Exactly, that's what I'm worried about. If he's staying up all night every night with me, we're both going to suffer. Shh. When the vassals caught sight of my handmaid and I, they all bowed their heads at once. Well, well, well. Even the princesses are at work. That's very admirable. That's not what you were saying a moment ago. I... thought it would be best to be open. I had to be open and honest in everything. With that conviction, I stood tall. It hurt being exposed to the men's lascivious eyes, but everything I did was out of necessity. If at least I stood strong and proud, I wouldn't lose my dignity. I'm not interested in hearing any flattery. If you want to engage in tasteless gossip, think more carefully about where you do so. Uh, oh, n no, Princess, we weren't. Come on, let's go. Y yes Princess. Not wanting to hear any bumbling excuses, I called to the maid and left without looking back. I heard the ugly rumors, whether I wanted to or not. On the surface, everyone politely waited on me, but that was because I was a princess. Their bowed heads hid vulgar grins. They thought I wouldn't notice they were laughing at me. If I had just been a servant, they would have worn their scorn and mockery more openly. Princess! What? The handmaid bit her lip, reluctant to speak, tears streaming from her eyes. Hey, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Because... because this is so humiliating! What on earth is Sir Hanbei thinking, treating you like this? He's changed so much! He used to be a wonderful person! What, do you know what goes on in that room? There's a reason for that. I put my arm around the handmaid's shoulders. I'm sure Hanbei's suffering right now, too. Forced into a foreign land, plagued by illness, confused by fake memories, consumed with war. But that's no excuse! I never meant to cause you any worry on my behalf. I'm sorry. She's so compassionate, this handmaid. She apparently had no more words. She pressed her face into my shoulder and sobbed. Hey, I'm not crying and I'm the one suffering here. It wasn't so hard. No matter what ill was spoken behind my back, I had people who truly cared for me. People who didn't think badly of me. 
I hated seeing them worry for my sake, but it was they who gave me strength. That evening, I once again received the summons from Hanbei. But this time, something was different. Hanbei asked for me? Yes, he asked you to go see him, if you were able. That was unusual. Usually I was ordered to go, with no concern for my own circumstances. All right, tell him I'll be right there. I walked along the dark hall to Hanbei's door and realized there were two men speaking inside. Got it. So I should follow the demons, right? That voice, who is it? The man's voice sounded familiar, but... Hanbei, it's me, Saya. Come in. I entered as told and found that the other man was Kotoro. Kotoro's smile grew warm and friendly, not at all conforming to my impression of a ninja. Princess, it's nice to see you again. Yes, same here. We haven't met since the evening you came to the castle, I believe. There was no derision in Kotoro's smile, but in fact, a certain innocence. Innocence, really? Ninjas were known for their keen hearing. It was impossible that Kotoro hadn't heard the rumors. He's not stupid and he doesn't care, probably. Actually, maybe Hanbei even told him the truth. The first night we'd met, my impression had been unfavorable, but apparently he had another side. I took a seat in an open spot in the circle. Isn't it a triangle now, really? <laughs> Why did you ask for me tonight? Actually, Nobunaga's allowed me to borrow Kotoro for a while. I'm thinking about taking him and his men and infiltrating the demon leader's hideout. And therefore, there's something I'd like to ask for your help with. Me? I cocked my head to the side with curiosity. If there's anything I could do to help, I want you to teach me some children's songs. Children's songs? Right. I've heard the refugee children in the castle singing. Hanbei cleared his throat and began to sing. Stop trying to make me sing! I won't do it! What a terrifying sight the demon creatures be. Six horns on their head. One, two, three. Four, five, six. The lord of the castle lunges with his sword. Snicker, snack. Strikes the horrid demons dead. What is with that grin? He's smiling too big. <laughs> what, is, is, is Hanbei a terrible singer? Laugh out loud. Me and Kotaro are going to have a good laugh at your expense, Hanbei. Kotaro and I simultaneously turned to each other and let out a slow breath. Hanbei frowned, discontented. Why are you laughing? N no, we weren't. Give it up, princess. It would be kinder to just tell him. Hanbei, sir, you are a terrible singer. <laughs> he is a bad singer. <laughs> Man, maybe I should have just sang it since I'm a terrible singer. Oh well. <laughs> Hanbei silently pouted. I somehow... <laughs> I somehow managed to rein in my laughter. Not... <laughs> Why are you interested in that song? I wanted to know more about it. Yukimura, Masamune, and the other vassals didn't know it. And I'm not from around this area. The men might not know it, since the girls sang their songs when we played with balls. <laughs> oh my god, I just have such a dirty mind today for some reason. <laughs> the song you just sung was from the time my ancestors warred with the Rokaku clan. The name Rokaku meant six-horned, like the demons mocked in the song. This is how the rest of it goes. Though he strikes the demon's castle, seeking justice done, Rokaku Takayori's already dead. He sits so still, eyes open wide, face frozen stiff, a terrifying sight. And then you start the counting rhyme. When I finished singing, Kotaro broke out into applause. Bravo, bravo. You got a lovely voice. It sounds very much better sung by a woman after all. Takayori's already dead. Hanbei appeared deep and thought about something. Did that help you? Yes, there was one part that was consistent with my own idea. And what idea would that be? Can I ask? Not yet. I'll tell you once I figure out the details. I liked speaking with Hanbei like this, 
when his eyes were gentle and cool. Thanks. I can't wait to hear more about it. Hanbei glanced at me as I smiled, and then, annoyed for some reason, turned away. I'm surprised he didn't blush. Kotaro, after watching our exchange with a grin, interjected. You're looking much better now, princess. I'm glad to see her well. Really? Yeah. When I first got here, you looked really terrible. I did? That bad? Yeah. Maybe laughing at Hanbei's song helped a little. All women look prettier with a happy smile. Kotaro grabbed his crossed legs and started swaying back and forth like a child. Really? I totally didn't guess this side of his personality. I never thought he could be kind of childlike. I thought he'd be roguish. This is so cute. I like it. And when you do that, you look nothing at all like a head ninja. Really? Really? When we met the other night, I thought you were sort of a bad guy. That's awfully mean. <laughs> As Kotaro and I smiled at each other, suddenly Hanbei looked up from his book and spoke. Jealous? Princess. Oh, yes. What is it? You helped me with what I wanted. I don't need you here anymore. Yeah, he doesn't like me palling around with Kotaro. He's sending me away. Instead of idling around in here, go back to your room. You're not the boss of me. I hated being spoken to in that way, with such disrespect, even in front of Kotaro. It's heartbreaking, but really it's infuriating. Before I even had time to be angry, I felt sad. I hung my head and got to my feet. Well then, I guess I'll just... Just as I started to say my goodbye, Kotaro interrupted me. Hey, hey, Hanbei, that's no way to talk to her. With his eyes still fixed on his book, Hanbei answered grumpily. This has nothing to do with you, Kotaro. Huh, <laughs> going to be rude to me now too, are you? I can be rude if I want. I outrank you. I was polite out of respect as a military leader. I thought I told you to stop standing there like a fool and go back to your room, princess. Ah, oh, that is my one thing about sundares. I love them, but I hate the ones that are insulting and keep calling you stupid. Alright. Hanbei, I love you, but you gotta let up on the idiot and fool stuff. Yeah, I understand these guys. I can roll with it. I just can't stand the insults too much. When he finally raised his head, his eyes creased in a malicious smile. Unless you feel like having a nice long talk with a different man for once. Maybe I would like to. In that case, please find yourself a different room so I won't be disturbed. Maybe I will! I had no idea you were such a coward. Kotaro noisily got to his feet. Yeah, Kotaro has definitely got his number. He knows exactly what's going on, even though my character is clueless. Hanbei glared at Kotaro with displeasure, but Kotaro was unaffected. How old are you anyway, Hanbei? You're being an idiot. Does it make you feel good, bullying a girl like this? Hanbei's lips twisted into a sneer. Huh, what would a ninja know about anything? For an instant, anger clouded Kotaro's face, but he soon regained his composure. What do you mean, what would a ninja know about anything? He's a man just like you! Hanbei. What is it now? I know you didn't mean that, what you just said. If that was really how you felt, you'd be a sad man. A truly wise man would never think that. Let's go, princess. we better let Hanbei take some time to cool off. I'll walk you back to your room. But Hanbei... But Hanbei... Kotaro snorted at my concern. Forget about that stubborn fool. You're too nice to him. What he needs is a little time being left alone. He's exactly right, and he could stand to be jealous a little too. That could actually help things along. Oh man, I totally can't wait to read Kotaro's story. Hanbei didn't speak, his eyes on his book. I only thought I saw the slopes of his shoulders slightly sag. Only after we left the room and were about to close the door did he finally speak up. Kotaro. What? I'm sorry about what I said. So don't touch my woman. 
He didn't meet Kotoro's eyes, but at least he apparently felt bad about his actions. In his handsome features was the faintest hint of regret. Maybe you should think long and hard about why you can say that to me, but not to Saya. With that, Kotaro slid shut the door. Way to tell on Kotaro. I really like him. <laughs> Oops, sorry I skipped the line. I stood on the other side of the door, watching Hanbei's shadow. Kotaro tapped me on the shoulder. Leave him, okay? It's no use talking to him right now. Come on, let's go. Then he started to walk off ahead. I found it strange that even though he acted so familiar towards me, it didn't bother me at all. That's because he's being nice and friendly. The way Hanbei is not. As he walked in front of me, he spoke without turning around. You know, princess. What? You might not know it, but Hanbei acts like this because he's jealous. Huh? You and I were getting along so well, it made him jealous. Even though he should just be honest about it, instead of being mean to you, you know? Kotaro's eyes, as he glanced back at me, held a light of mischief in them. But I really think he might not care about me at all. No way. Asking you to go see him about that song was just an excuse. He could have asked any old servant or maid about such a common song. It's obvious that he asked for you just because he wanted to see you. You really think so? No doubt about it. Deep down, he wants to get along with you. Probably, he's more of a bratty child than anyone else here realizes. The fact that he's so brilliant only makes it worse for you and for himself. When you think about it like that, I actually feel sorry for him. Kotaro's gaze was fixed on the moon shining outside the small window. He looked somehow sad. Is he remembering his real life? After we said goodnight, I sat alone in my room. No doubt about it. Deep down, he wants to get along with you. Kotaro's words still echoed in my ears. Could that really be true? My heart started to beat more quickly. I hoped it was true, but... If it was true... All of a sudden, a flood of tears flowed from my eyes. If it was true, how wonderful would that be? If Hanbei really cared for me as a person, as a woman, it would be a comfort beyond describing. I suddenly realized how weary I'd become. How much stress I'd been under, putting on a brave face every day. I put my face in my hands. Even the dagger, usually so eager to talk when I was alone, was silent today. But I was grateful for that. For now, all I wanted to do was be myself and cry. Oh, that was a longer chapter, but it still felt so short. Like I said, I do like Hanbei, but Kotaro, I, I really liked talking to him. <laughs> he was fun to talk to and not exactly what I was expecting. Well, sounds like a battle is coming up soon. So hopefully nobody's going to get seriously injured. Nobody that I care about, at least. I'm sure somebody's going to get seriously injured, but hopefully it's not going to be each of the guys and each of their routes. We'll see who ends up getting seriously injured in this. I'm sure it's going to happen to somebody. But Hanbei's already got his illness. We'll see. Something's got, something dramatic's going to happen soon, I'm sure. All right, well, I hope to see you in my future videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.